I'm going to test a selection of spin bars on my magnetic stirrer. And there's a wide variation in magnetic stirrers. They differ in motor wattage and in the size of the spin bar that they can move. And part of that is a function of the magnetic strength of the stirring tablet. And the other is uh, the spacing of the magnets. If you look at this slow motion video, you can see that my magnets are about 45 millimeters apart. And that limits the size of the spin bar I could use. Because if the spin bar is longer than the poles of the magnet, it's going to be very hard for it to couple to the magnet in the plate. And it's just going to spin out. So don't necessarily think that you could just get any size super large stir bar and use it on any magnetic stir. There's an optimal stir bar for each magnetic stir, vessel size, and how much liquid and the viscosity of the liquid. But I'm going to test a bunch of stir bars sent to me by um, Bell Art. And you can buy these on their Amazon store or bellart.com. And the white ones are an um, Alnico 5 alloy. And those are the lowest cost and suitable for the highest temperatures. I mean, you can go really high with those, like 500C or 930F. Um, the magnetic power on those is on the weaker end of the spectrum. And that is also true for the red ones. If you want a higher powered magnet, then there's green ones. They're samarium cobalt. It's about three times the magnetic power. They're still autoclavable. They cost more. Um, and they work up to 350 C or 662 Fahrenheit. This is a two inch Alnico 5 one. It is about 50.8 millimeters. It's actually hard for it to stir well. I believe it's because this type of magnet is not that powerful. But it's fine if you need a lot of these or you don't have a really demanding application. You can see there's a vortex forming. And this stirrer has a 20 watt motor. I'm barely using any of its power right now. It's only on a, about 15 or 20% of its power. I'll try to raise the speed. And it's really hard to get going. But now, let's compare that to this one, which is a little bit longer and a little bit fatter. This is a, uh, a 60 by 10 millimeter. And this is starting to get longer than what the plate is made for, so I don't know if we're going to have better luck with this one. It's moving more water per rotation, but it can't go as high as speed without spinning out. A little bit stronger vortex. Now the vessel size also matters. If you had a, a really small vessel, like a small beaker, it might stay spinning more easily because the walls of it help keep the forces going. But I did try it in a Pyrex beaker and there really wasn't much of a difference. So I think the most important thing is to have the vessel floor be thin and this one is thin it's as close as i can get to the plate so this one definitely works it's kind of a lot of trouble to keep to keep going and i'm gonna say it's really too long for this model of stir plate
All right, now how about this one? This is the same material, but it's a 70 by 12. So according to my theory, this should be actually worse. Yeah, it's just too long for this plate. So there are plates with bigger rotor diameters. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend a 70 millimeter or a 60 millimeter for this particular plate. Now let's try this really big one. I don't know this length, but I'll put it next to the 70. I would say it's a 120. And I'm thinking it won't work at all because the poles of these magnets are outside of the poles of this plate. Yep, I can't get it to work at all. Now what about this monster? This is a giant 108 by 27, which is four and a quarter inches. Because the diameter is so large, it's gonna have more magnetic force, and I think it's gonna work. moving quite a bit of water. I'll try to increase the speed. Oh. Yeah, I think it's still too long. Too long for this plate. Now I could leave it like that and it would be fine. But I'm only using about 15% of this plate's rotational capability. So I wouldn't necessarily buy this one for my brand of plate. All right, so now I have some red ones and I believe it's identical to this white one, except a different color, which can help for identification purposes. Um, let's try it out. Whoa. Nice vortex forming. but it has its limits. That was a 50.8 by eight millimeter, just like the white one. All right, now this is a 76.2 by 12.7, which is a three by one half inch. You can tell these are made in the USA. They seem to be, um, Imperial U.S. units 
converted to metric. Yeah, so I'm having the same trouble with this as I did with the long white one. It's a little bit fatter, so it might have a little more magnetic capability. Now I'm going to move on to the green. Sumerian cobalt, um, more magnetic force than the white or red ones. And they take their high temperature enough. So I guess the only reason not to buy these is because they cost more, but they're way better. Um, not necessarily this one for my plate because it's on the long side. So it, the poles of my plate are within the diameter of this stir bar and that makes it unstable. Yep. This one's too long. And that was a three inch, which is a uh, 130. All right, so I saved the best for last. These are small green ones. And this one is a one inch or 25.4 millimeter. And this one is a two inch or 50 millimeter. Let's try this little green one. All right, now we're talking. We're finally getting up to some decent RPM. I'm at about one third power now and a vortex is forming and it seems nice and stable. I'm gonna see how high I can go on the RPM. I'm at half power now. about two thirds power. This is full power, it's all the way up and it's still stable. So this is a good one for this plate. I can see a black speck in the water way over here and it's moving all over the place. So this water is circulating. All right, I'm gonna stop that. <sighs> 50 by 21 millimeters, green, powerful magnet. Let's see what it can do. Let the water get moving. Vortex is forming. I'm at about one third power. This is an octagon shape. It's catalog number F37174. I'm still at about one third power. The water's really catching up with it. Spun out. Let's try it again. The problem is this container has a mold indentation in the center. So 
I'm gonna change. this So this is half power, and look at it, look at what it's doing. It's a lot of stir. If I go up to much more than half power, it will spin out. But it was moving a ton of water at half power. So in conclusion, I would say for this particular SH3 plate, these are the two best ones. This one can move more water at a lower RPM. This one can go to full RPM. So if I were gonna pick one, I would be happy with either one of these or I would get something in between. So these are the two extremes. I wouldn't get smaller than this. I wouldn't get larger than this. I'd be somewhere between them. And I would definitely get the green even though it costs more. It's worth it.